Let's go ahead and get started with Article 1. We're going to be talking about detecting bias in artificial intelligence and machine learning models. This research is being funded by Amazon and the National Science Foundation, and it is actually a collaboration between four big universities. We have Professor Ming-Yan Liu from University of Michigan, Professor Yang Liu from UC Santa Cruz, Professor Parinaz Narizadeh from Ohio State University, and Professor Ming Yin from Purdue University. So Dan, throughout the entire life of this show, which is like five episodes, we've talked a lot about artificial intelligence and how great it can be to help us explore, you know, like new drugs, Spotify music, and Netflix shows. But there's also downsides to it. So to train a machine learning model, you need data. But what happens when that data is corrupted with bias? Because, you know, if it's generated by human beings and human beings have biases, it can basically lead to a machine learning model that has bias. An example of this is that a big company a while ago was trying to develop a AI that could go through all job applications and pick the top candidates. But a little bit of research showed that it was actually prioritizing and saying that men who were less qualified for the position were better candidates than women who were more qualified for the position. This is pretty alarming, seeing as yeah. how... Yeah, it's, it it's, makes me uncomfortable, and especially knowing the nature of AI, where they learn and they self-reinforce, it means that unchecked, this model could have gone further and further towards only hiring like men instead of women, even though the women were way more qualified, which I'm not cool with. Exactly. And that that's the issue. It's... If the error is in there, no matter like how small it might seem, it'll keep propagating and it'll keep building on it. So like in this instance, you would have, you know, a, a field that was predominantly, you know, males that were doing it before. And that's how the best candidates that they ever had, which were the, they were using to train the model with were males. So the language it was looking for within the resumes was pretty male oriented. So no matter how good the female candidate was, the male candidate was just pushing above, which is horrible when you think about that, like a job, especially the pandemic, I think has put this in a new perspective. It's how people like sustain their livelihoods. It's how they provide for themselves or their families. And you might be pushing them out of it, out of the running for like a really good position with a flawed model. And uh, the other side of this, by the way, is that companies are also losing good candidates. Yeah using a system that they think is actually benefiting them. Yeah, so they're trying to find the best candidates and they're finding ones that are less qualified and at the same time being biased towards women. Yeah. Um, I've also seen AI kind of run off the rails in terms of social media. Um, I don't know if you remember on a certain social media platform a few months ago, there was a big thread on posting a picture of a white man and a black man and seeing which that. face the social media preview focused on. And I every do single remember time, that. Yeah, it's the white guy. Yeah, and an another example is like auto captioning on YouTube. It's not great if you have anything other than like a plain American or UK English. If you have any type of accent, it's not great, um, and that's it, it's it, not ideal. It doesn't include <laughs> everyone that doesn't have this, you know, perfectly trained dialect. It actually like. In my mind, it's selecting out a lot of the most talented people in the world, which are the folks that speak multiple languages. Exactly, right? Like you're limiting the reach of some amazing content. And, and on the, again, on the flip side of this, you have people that are hearing impaired, and now they can't access that information either because the, the captioning system doesn't work right. Yeah, so there's, there's a big trend here, and I think it's good that we say this. is We've been talking a lot about the benefits of technology. It's important to zoom out and see what negative effects they might have as well. And I think that you know, goes towards the merit of this research as well, is having people that are funded and dedicated, focused on finding bias in AI and calling it out and stopping it. It's really important. Absolutely. And, you know, we're using AI in almost everything now, especially like law enforcement. So imagine you might be like messing with someone's life if if they detect that like, oh, this is the person you want to go after and that's not the case at all. Yeah, like you could literally be risking their life, and you know, I, I was, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, he was talking with Elon Musk, and he brought up a question. It was like, uh, "Are you afraid of AI?" And Elon's answer was, 
No, but because of like how deep it is into our lives, like how much it affects everyone, society should be able to have some sort of oversight on how AI is being implemented. Like there should be some sort of check. And I think the work that these folks are doing, that's a really good first step. Yeah, I agree. You know, we should have uh, the opportunity to oversee what's going on and interfere, especially in areas where it really, really can affect people's livelihood. I completely agree. Yeah. One thing I'd like to point out as well is all four of these researchers you mentioned from those four different universities, all of them are women. So kudos to them for stepping up and dismantling this AI bias that could, you know, ultimately end up discriminating against a lot of people. So huge shout out to them for doing a great job and, you know, doing research that is really, really meritable. Yeah. Let's go ahead.